about today, see, um, thank you for jumping on with me, is um, innovation strategy. So we've often spoken about how important innovation is, and I'm sure you can agree that innovation has almost become a buzzword around um, every single circle around. Um, so what I want to speak to you about today is why innovation is so important, um, why companies um, you know, are struggling to innovate within their own you know, walls, and, you know, and finally talk about why crowd, how, how crowdsourcing can help them overcome these, these difficulties or barriers to innovation that they're experiencing. So um, just a little bit of research um, I found by a good friend, McKenzie, um, there's a significant percentage of uh, executives who have, you know, outwardly said that they think innovation is important. Um, but, you know, you said that um, crowd, uh, companies should crowdsource um, because they can't innovate internally. Uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think they struggle so much with innovation? It's a common thread that you see that big companies can't innovate. And I actually happen to like big companies. Like, I think companies are great. I think that um, part of forming Hero X to begin with is to help companies become more successful and effective and organizations in general, because in many ways, the organization is one of the greatest inventions that we, we've created. It's created modern society. Um, and we, we uh, take a lot of it for granted. Um, and I don't want to see it stripped down because that would have big consequences. So the way I look at it is it's really, it, it's really important for companies to be successful innovators and not be constantly torn down and cause huge disruptions. Um, that's a whole other topic for another day. Um, I would argue that companies are really good at innovating in certain ways and they're really bad at innovating in other ways. Um, and anybody in a big organization probably sees that. Um, the type of innovation that we're talking about is the disruptive innovation, the adoption of new technologies, new approaches, um, those uh, innovations are very difficult um, to develop and foster inside an organization. And the answer is real simple. Um, those types of innovations don't show up as brilliant ideas. They show up as stupid ideas, half-baked ideas. Um, they won't survive the, um, the, the internal processes of an organization. Because if you think about it, um, organizations... Um, like that are successful that have built out have developed a set of proven uh, approaches to how they um, um, distribute resources, um, initiate projects. So we call this the organizational immune system. And the immune system basically attacks any stupid ideas, any dangerous ideas, anything that's going to hurt customers, uh, hurt the brand. Um, and that uh, immune system has the impact of uh, really preventing innovation from, from fostering. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so that's why you see so many times, you know, somebody working at a company and then they leave to start up a startup to take the idea um, that they have and build a business around it. And often they are they went to their manager or you know internal and talked about their idea and it was rejected because it doesn't fit their existing way of thinking mm -hmm. and that um that process is, is is really kind of you know pretty common okay um another way to look at this is the the market the rate of market innovation is being driven by network effects. You know, the internet in many ways uh, has been one of the most um, um, disruptive inventions um, ever, really, because so much is happening on top of the internet that we're talking about. The inter internet has created global network effects mm -hmm. where um, things are just moving faster and things are, um, are like um, working in tandem and the, the, the global network effects, which are now being driven by um, smartphones and other technologies on top of the internet, 
is causing uh, this acceleration of the rate of innovation is accelerating in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Most organizations feel that they're falling behind. That's one of the impacts of this. And they can't keep up with all the changes that are happening uh, that are impacting their customers, their businesses, um, their competitiveness, um, the, the evolution of their brand, um, the adoption of, of the new ways of doing business. Um, it's almost relentless across so many sectors um, and organizations can easily get overwhelmed. Um, you know, think about like the adoption of new technologies like machine learning, you know, think about, um, m you know, modernizing their, their HR practices, for example. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, you know, using social media effectively, um, of course, they'll probably have startups that are creating disruptive um, products that threaten their product lines as well. Um, you know, they're, they're being attacked on multiple fronts. So our, um, you know, my view is real simple. Um, the, it is very difficult to um, do everything a company needs to do and be a, a, a disruptive innovator internally. Mm -hmm. Companies are really good at innovating um, incrementally. So continual improvement, which is a form of innovation, right? Um, you know, um, making something that, let's say, ma the manufacturing costs, you know, for an automobile and the, the amount of, um, you know, features and functions in automobile has steadily increased and the average selling price of an automobile has been relatively flat for multiple decades. That's yeah. that economies of scale, that, that production efficiency, um, the reliability of cars, which I think have massively increased in the last couple of decades. Mm -hmm. These are all forms of innovation, but they're in the forms of continual innovation or incremental, not disruptive innovation. So that part, keep it internal, keep focusing on it. Companies are really good at continual improvement and those little um, innovations that help improve products, improve customer experience, um, reduce unit costs, um, reduce error rates, all awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, where crowdsourcing fits in is on the opposite extreme of innovation, um, disruptive innovation or breakthroughs. And that's where um, crowdsourcing plays a really important role. Because if you think about what the essence of crowdsourcing is, it's, it's using the network effects, the global network effects, um, to help you, your organization, increase its rate of innovation. In other words, you're using the rate of market innovation for your own advantage. And our view is that that's the only reliable way for organizations to boost their rate of innovation so they're not falling behind is by using the market, the, the very place that's causing the, this innovation gap um, for their own advantage. Um, and that is called crowdsourcing. Yeah, um, and that all makes like perfect sense. And you basically answered all the questions that I had, but I mean, if it's that simple, then why don't big companies, why aren't they jumping at, the, at this idea like already? My experience is, is they are when it's presented as a viable um, and, and uh, purchasable um, solution. Right, so that's our job at Hero X is we're introducing crowdsourcing. You know, and you know, companies uh, only buy complete solutions, and and companies need confidence that the solution works. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, our job is really about building awareness of um, how organizations are using crowdsourcing successfully. We've got mm -hmm. over 200 case studies that we share. So um, right now, I think it's just a an issue of um, of like the distribution of, of the understanding. So in other words, it's a lack of awareness, the power of the crowd and how accessible it is to organizations. That's not well understood. So what we're focusing on is building that awareness. And once companies realize that that's actually a possible solution, because they've heard about it at a distance, but they don't often, they don't understand how to do it. 
we're making it mainstream, making it easy that um, at HeroX, any company, any organization can crowdsource successfully without having to become experts in crowdsourcing. And that's a real game changer for uh, organizations. And the final thing I'll add is what one of the things I get excited about with HeroX is the, the impact that it will have on the world, on the, the talented people that are out there, uh, um, often you know, underutilized. And so if you think about you know, thousands of companies crowdsourcing, think of the tremendous opportunities that there, were, uh, there will be for you know, any, anybody, any place, in any country, you know, with any skin color, uh, to be able to find their, the right um, you know, ch um, profession for them, develop their skills, um, shine, and uh, become part of a greater team. So that's very exciting for me as well. That's fantastic. Very well put.